Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I want to talk about a post-processing technique that I think is underappreciated, underutilized, and that's because it's often misused. And that post-processing technique is called split toning. Now, I'm going to talk about it in Lightroom, but really every post-processing application out there has split toning in it. Um, often I see photographers just totally ignore it. They don't use it at all. Sometimes they will use it and be disappointed in the results. And then that forces them to never use it in the future. Well, I want to talk about how you could utilize split toning and how it can be most effective on specific types of images. Now, often people will come with a fully saturated image such as this. And they'll just open up the split toning um, tab in Lightroom or again in any application. They all work identically. And they'll just move these sliders and they'll say, oh, you know, let's get some shadow tint. And then they'll come in and they go, oh, that looks horrible. You know, and they, they just reset everything and close down split toning and call it a day. Well, split toning works best on certain types of images and it will work best when you're going for a specific type of look and you know how to achieve that look. Specifically, if you really look at split toning, um, you'll notice the U slider as you move it, you get a number over here. What you're actually getting is called a U angle. Uh, every color has a U angle. For example, the U angle of yellow is 60. So if you put 60 in there, then you're right on yellow. And you can see that the little, uh, below the little slide of the little bar there has colors. Well, that's, you know, right on yellow. And then the saturation of yellow, uh, when you're at zero, you're not affecting anything. But as you move it up, you're increasing the saturation. So I'm adding more yellow to the highlights. So you have to understand hue angles, first of all, to understand how to use split toning. And in the description below this video, I'll have a link to a website. And the website has this nifty chart. And on this chart, you'll see hue angles. I mentioned monitor yellow, just yellow in general. That's on your monitor. Yellow has a hue angle of 60. Conversely, blue has a hue angle of 240 and so on. So you can see all these hue angles. And again, it's on this website. I'll have it linked in the description below this video. These are additive complementary colors uh, is the theme of this article. Specifically, when you have colors at opposite ends of a um, color wheel, those are called complementary colors. And there's two different types of complementary colors. There's additive and subtractive. And this article is talking about additive. You could Google subtractive complementary colors, and those are slightly different. For instance, um, yellow's subtractive complementary color is purple, whereas in uh, additive sense, it's blue. So they're slightly different. And it really doesn't matter um, as far as the look you're going for in split toning if you want to use complementary colors, whether you use additive or subtractive. Uh, so again, I encourage you to Google subtractive complementary colors and get hue angles for that as well. But we're going to be working with these additives. And as I've been kind of alluding to now in my last few sentences, we're talking about complementary colors, and that's where split toning um, usually is utilized. When you're going to put a specific color in the highlights and its complement in the shadows, and that's where you would often get uh, the best look for an image. But you often don't do it on a fully saturated image such as this. What you would do is you could do it, on a black and white image. So if we stay with our complementary color idea, uh, we want to go with, let's say, yellow and blue. That's 60 and 240. And we'll put that 60 uh, in the um, highlights. So I'm just going to type in 60. We're going to add some saturation. And I'll come back and readjust that. And then in the shadows, we're going to put 240 because that's the hue angle of blue. And then we'll add some saturation for that. So you could see how we've just color color toned this black and white image with complementary colors of yellow and blue. And that's what a lot of people do with their black and white images. 
um, of course, most often you're going to shoot in color, right? So what you could do is you could just go to the basic tab and click on the black and white uh, thing here in Lightroom or in, and again, any application uh, split toning is included. Just convert your image to black and white. Then you could go down to split toning. And if we still want to stay with that yellow and blue theme, we could put uh, the U of the highlights at 60, just throw up saturation a little bit and the U of the shadows at 240. As I try to dial it in, it doesn't have to be exact though. I mean, you could get close. And then you could bring up the saturation of that as well. So that's what a lot of photographers do. They'll convert their images to black and white. They'll decide how they want to color tone it with split toning. And they'll, you know, dial those numbers in. Very simple as that. And they'll adjust saturation to touch, uh, to taste, um, how they, uh, you know, how much they want it saturated. Do they want the yellows really saturated in the highlights or just a touch saturated? So they'll go, um, you know, with whatever. And that's how a lot of these photographers come up with these specific looks. So you could come in here again. We'll convert this one to black and white. Again, you don't always have to use black and white. And I'll show you that in a moment. But you don't always have to use yellow and blue either. Um, you could come in with other colors as well. Another very um, popular kind of theme is cyan and orange. So you could see it's 44 and 96. And they'll put the, um, the, the orange in the highlights. So we'll dial in 44. And what was the cyan again? 196. And then we'll do 196 into the shadows and add some saturation there. So that's another real popular. Again, it's a complementary color, uh, two complementary colors, complements to each other. Um, now again, you don't always have to uh, totally desaturate the image to begin with. Um, you can do it on a color image, but it usually uh, works best from what my experience on a color image that has a lot of whites and grays in it or blacks. So a lot of uh, a color image that doesn't have a lot of color to begin with in it. So an image like this. So you could come in with your split toning. And again, let's just go with the, uh, the uh, yellow and blue on this one, 60. And I'm getting approximate now, okay? So we don't have to dial in an exact, so you could just kind of push through the numbers. And so you could do it uh, on a fully saturated color image as well. But again, it seems to work best on uh, color images that don't have a ton of color in them to begin with. So white walls, gray walls, and this people wearing, you know, white, black, or gray clothing, that seems to work best. Another thing you could do is just don't totally desaturate the image. So if you have a color image, don't just click on black and white automatically leave it in color, but go down to the saturation slider and just pull it down to kind of bring out some of that saturation. And then you could go to split toning. And then again, let's, again, complementary colors seem to always work best when you're dealing with uh, split toning. So you could come up with some type of uh, complementary uh, numbers here. So let's just go off the wall, uh, magenta and bluish green. So that's 316 and 164. Uh, let's put the 164 up in the highlights and the 316 down in the shadows. Let's see if I could dial it in. Yeah, there we go. And then I kind of don't like that at all, but that gives you an idea. Also in um, Lightroom and in most other applications that have split toning, they're going to have this balance control. You could uh, have more of the midtones, more towards the highlights or more towards the shadows, depending on how you uh, move that slider. But that's something I think, uh, split toning that is, I think it's something that is really, really, really underappreciated, underutilized by many photographers that aren't um, maybe past like that... Um, that stage where they're, they're, they're not quite super creative yet. They're still kind of looking at other photographers and imitating their work because that's kind of like um, 
how we grow as a photographer. We start out um, just basically learning how to use our camera. Then we imitate shots, right? We look at someone's work and we kind of imitate how they did it, their composition and things like that. But then there's a point where we really want to be creative, but we don't want to imitate anyone. And I think split toning could really help you um, kind of the combination of your own style of shooting with split toning could make something that is uniquely yours. So check out split toning. Um, if you have any interesting split toned image, uh, tag me on Instagram. I am at Anthony Morganti on Instagram. I am very interested to see it. Also in the comment section below, I'll let me know if split toning is something you use or you just don't bother with it. Let me know. Also in the description below this video, I have a link again to this article and I have a link to my Instagram so you could easily find me. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.